guys and welcome back to the channel as you can guess from the thumbnail uh, this video is about printing photographs and putting them on the wall something that I love doing I've got loads of frames all around the house and it's something that I get often asked by you guys um, where I get my frames from etc and how I map my frames so I thought I'd do a video of shooting a uh, film making a print and getting it on the wall and that's what this is going to be about So I decided to do something different and it started off with uh, designing the frame first and you know when I talk about designing the frame I'm not getting all snobby and all oh, let's do design frames and stuff I just wanted to have a visualization of how I'm going to frame a, a square 6x6 print I know I was going to be out shooting the Holger 120 which you saw the other day on my medium format videos and a roll of T-Max 400 film so uh, off I went now I normally go for either a square frame with a square uh, print or a rectangle frame with a rectangle portrait print inside or landscape whichever way you want to go but this time I thought I'd try something different I thought I'd go for a rectangle frame and put a square mat inside and that's something that you can't usually buy in the shops so uh, off I trotted off to get some mat board because I ran out so uh, I went off to the shops to buy some mat board and I bought black and white and by the time I got inside the shop, they changed the whole thing around. I couldn't even find a mat board. So I had to ask someone where they were. Why do supermarkets do that? They, you, you go in, you just about know where everything is. And then you go in another day and everything's changed around. It's all gone topsy-turvy. But uh, anyway, I managed to find the mat boards. And just literally a stone's throw away from the shop is the beach. So I went off and took the holger down to the beach. And this was all planned to shoot the beach huts. And the thing I like about beach huts is they're so minimalistic. And if you don't know what a beach hut is, guys, if you're not in the UK or you're not familiar with beach huts, they cost a lot of money. People can buy them uh, and put all their towels and beachy stuff in. So when the cut summer comes, they go down there, have a cup of tea, have a couple of beers into the evening, a little barbecue, and uh, go out into the sea with all their towels and go back into their beach hut and play guitars and become hippies. Pretty much, uh, that's what beach huts are anyway. Uh, they're quite good fun. Not many people can afford one, but uh, they're kind of like the price of a small house. But uh, anyway, they look great on photographs. So that was my whole idea was to get a, a photograph with the beach huts using the Holger, the T-Max 400, getting in the dark room, making a print and getting it inside this frame that I had visioned in my mind. So as you can see, I didn't really do too much videoing, guys. I didn't want to be down there too long. It was bloody cold. But uh, I just had a mooch around the beach huts, had a look at some different angles, uh, grabbed the holger, and literally just went around shooting whatever I needed to shoot. This camera is so easy to use. Um, I always use a 400 speed film when um, I shoot this. I look outside, see what the weather's like, or see what the, the lighting is like outside. And when it's pretty much right, I can put a 400 speed film in go off, shoot this on F11, and uh, my heart's content, get a bit creative, get some nice compositions going, come back, get in the dark room, and that's what I did, exactly what I did with these beach huts. The only thing, uh, all I need to do now is just to decide what compositions I want with these beach huts. Do I want to go to the back? Do I want to go to the side? Do I want to, want to shoot up? Uh, do I want to shoot along? So I did a whole range of compositions. And then when I came back, I was only there for literally probably about 20 minutes, half hour. It didn't take me long at all. And when I came back, um, I got developing the negatives in Rodnell and they came out absolutely perfect. Before I carry on, check out the new S-Flab Beginner's Guide to Film Photography and Darkroom Printing. It's a complete beginner's guide from buying your first camera and developing film at home all the way to making your first darkroom print. Packed with lots of information, illustrations and exclusive unseen step-by-step -step videos all in a simple and easy way to understand with personal email support from me along the way. Hit the link in this video's description or visit the S-Flab website for more details. So what I did, I scanned the negatives and then I dumped them into Photoshop, put them into the frame so I could visualise what they would look like. And I'll just quickly run through those and show you uh, my visualisations now. So 
So these are the legs here that I came back with and uh, after developing the film, they came out really nice. There was one in particular that I really liked. It was just the composition, very minimalistic, a little bit of sky going on, and that was the one that I wanted to print. So I got off into the dark room and did all my usual jiggery pokery inside the dark room. So that was making the print from that negative and you'll notice that I was doing a little tiny bit of burning in the sky. The whole girl's got a natural kind of vignette going on anyway so I kind of just emphasised that a little bit more and when I looked at the print after doing a couple of test prints I realised that the beat shots were actually popping out of the image and that was pretty much where I wanted to be. So that was it, I made a few more prints and then I printed another negative as well and that one came out really nice. That was the second photograph that I preferred out of the whole range that I took. And to be honest with you, the others were okay, but I just wasn't over fussed with them. But those particular two negatives, I really liked. I liked the composition and the way that they looked. So it was time now to start making the mat board for myself. And I initially just went for a normal white mat board with a, with an aperture of um, eight by eight, so I could show a bit more white of the uh, paper around the edges. But in the end, I decided to go for a double mat. I just thought that might look quite nice. The double mat is, is having one colour one side and one colour underneath. Um, so as you can see, I went for a white mat board and underneath was a black mat board. So you've got this black, nice heavy black border and the print sits underneath that. It looks quite effective and uh, it works, you know. So um, yeah, after cut the mat board, I then went off and started to make um, clean all the glass and get the mat board and everything else into the frame. The hard part about that is trying to make sure you've got no little tiny bits um, floating around. So the best way to do that, I find, is to put the glass down, clean the glass, and then um, start putting your mat boards on top. Have a look. If it's all nice and clean, then you can put it inside the frame, uh, pin it all down, turn it around, and give the front of it a clean, ready for display. So oh, there it is there. That's the framed print that I made from the camera to the wall. Like I said, on the whole gut, nice simple stuff. And uh, getting the print made in the dark room, getting the frame double matted. And you notice, that you can see the double mat there, quite effective. And a large, heavy area at the bottom than there is at the top. So it sits quite nice. And when that's on the wall, uh, that won't look out of place in any home. And like anything, when you're printing in a dark room, you know, dust is the devil. Sometimes it happens and sometimes you're lucky and it doesn't. It's just a matter of keeping your dark room clean and dust free. Um, and I often do. It's very rare that I get end up with dust spots. But this one here came out with a little tiny dust spot there. I can spot that out with some ink dyes. I've been playing around with them lately, as you probably know. So uh, I'm going to work on that one. And then when I put the, I clean the negative, put it back in the enlarger. And something else got on the negative as I printed the second time round. So I had to take the negative back out the uh, enlarger and uh, do another reprint. But hey-ho, I've made another print, guys. These ones are going to go on eBay if you want to bid up for these. This is on Ilford's new multi-grade portfolio paper that I um, showed the other day on my channel. So this is their brand new paper. Um, and I've put two prints out on eBay. They're both going to go as a pair because this one here, I've made another print for myself. So I'm going to intend to get that one framed. So I've got two of them on the wall for myself. 
um, exactly the same too. So these are copies of those prints on Ilford's portfolio paper. If you want to bid up for these two, they'll be on eBay. Like I said, they'll be a pair, so there's not two listings. It's one listing for both prints. Um, and there they are. They're exactly identical as the print I've got framed and another one that I'm going to frame with this one there. So if you want to support the channel, uh, these two prints will be going on eBay. Uh, have a look on the link in the description of the video and uh, bid up on it. Good luck for that. So there you go, real simple photography with this Holger camera. And I featured this the other day amongst all my other medium format cameras, 6x6. Um, but, you know, simple to shoot. Once I've put the film inside, I always use a 400 speed film with this camera. As long as the lighting conditions are pretty much where I expect them to be, I can go off and shoot pretty quick. As long as I've got my compositions um, and a, a good eye for it, then, you know, I can come back with some decent negatives if the, if the development side of things goes well. And uh, it did this time round. So I've made some lovely prints uh, in the darkroom. One of them that I've framed and I'm real happy with the way that I've done that with the double matte. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.